Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart, and today we are continuing our D&D December celebration extravaganza with a two-parter on The Legend of Zelda, the Nintendo high fantasy action-adventure RPG franchise created by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takeshi Tezuka. I feel this barely needs an introduction, but for those unaware, The Legend of Zelda is a long-running series about the heroes of Hyrule, and sometimes outside of Hyrule. The story follows not one hero, but a legacy hero throughout the ages who defeats a great evil while exploring the lands and destroying shrubbery and pottery. Inspired by childhood explorations, Shigeru made a game with Takeshi that combined the high fantasy of Tolkien, medieval folklore, and some Celtic names to bring the world of Hyrule to life. And what better way to start off this trio with the namesake of the whole franchise, Keeper of the Triforce of Wisdom, Princess Zelda. Unlike the very Eurocentric naming conventions, Zelda was actually named after the American novelist, socialite, and painter Zelda Fitzgerald. Miyamoto found the name nice and pleasant, and thus the Legend of Zelda, haha, was born. Now, Eagle Eye viewers who have been keeping an eye on our Discord and Twitter may have seen this in advance and had some questions about who we're covering today, and if you haven't seen our calendar or heard of the release schedule, maybe you should follow Twitter and join the Discord. You know. Anyway, um, so some of you are wondering why we're picking Tetra and not, say, Princess Zelda from Ocarina of Time or uh, any of the other Zeldas. Well, here's the not so hot take of the week. Most of the Zeldas before Breath of the Wild were less dynamic characters and more MacGuffins or goals for Link, uh, and they just so happen to talk and use some magic. Now, that isn't to say that this is the case for all of them, but there's not a lot of dynamic characterization for most of them throughout the games. Even Ocarina of Time Zelda is just short of there before vanishing. And really, the only thing I can remember about her personality was Sheik, but... Even that was better handled with Samus and Metroid. And Ganondorf honestly had it worse. He's usually just an evil guy who's spurred on by the Curse of Demise. So there wasn't a lot to go with. And while Breath of the Wild is a very good option, there's a ton of lore that just hasn't been released with it yet. And the final expansion pass, uh, I believe, has not been released yet as of the time of this writing. But we will be open to doing Breath of the Wild Zelda over in the future. So if this video does well, be sure to show your support and click on the likes and the comments and all the good things that YouTubers are asking you to do. And now let's go ahead and talk about the pirate captain of the adult timeline, Tetra, introduced in Zelda Wind Waker on GameCube. Tetra is a pirate captain traveling the Great Sea, uh, a flooded Hyrule following Ganondorf's escape from the Void of Evil. Uh, check out next week's video about the Ocarina of Time link for more details. Anyway, Tetra is a pirate, causing chaos and looking for loot. She is unaware of her lineage, but does have a heart of gold. As such, we're going to start Tetra's journey at Chaotic Neutral. Uh, quick rules, we are not counting her appearances in Hyrule Warriors and Four Swords Adventures. Both of those games are considered non-canon, I believe. Uh, Four Swords Adventure, I'm not so sure on. Uh, but we will be covering her appearances in Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and the briefest mentions in Spirit Tracks. So with all that out of the way, let's go. After being dropped by accident on Outset Island by the Helmrock King, I think is how you pronounce that, Tetra met a young boy in a silly green getup named Link. Recalling that she was in the process of getting captured, her first instinct is to go back to the ship and blast the bird out of the sky. Chaotic neutral. Witnessing Link's sister Ariel getting captured by the Halmarok King, Tetra tries to save our latest green boy from falling to his death. When Link asks to join Tetra to find his sister, Tetra initially says no. In her mind, it's too dangerous and not really her responsibility. She only changes her mind when Rito Postman Quill brings up that Ariel was captured due to Tetra's crash landing. But only if Link says his goodbyes and arms himself. Uh, weirdly lawful good? With his goodbyes said and shield and sword in hand, Link leaves home. <laughs> 
Petra does give Link one more chance to leave as he gets emotional seeing his grandma, saying it's not going to get any easier moving forward. She allows Link to explore the ship, so as long as he doesn't bother anyone. Neutral good. Arriving outside the Forsaken Fortress, Tetra sees the one-time pirate hideout has turned into a maximum security fortress, now almost impossible to sneak in. Ever the forward thinker, Tetra decides to send Link in the safest way possible, via catapult! Chaotic good. <laughs> Before launching Link, Tetra sneaks her pirate charm into the catapult. She uses it to give the young adventurer advice and make fun of him for his spectacular fails. After seeing Link's unsuccessful attempt to save his sister and believing he's dead, Tetra and the crew leave. Chaotic good. Continuing their pirating ways, Tetra and her crew are approached by Quill, the postman, lying that they know of Link's whereabouts. The pirates learn of a pearl that is being hunted down by the forces of evil. Immediately, Tetra goes to the outset islands to snatch the pearl. She claims it's for the loot, but her crew suspects it might be to save the island from destruction. Chaotic good. After an unsuccessful infiltration of Jaboon's lair, Tetra and her crew go to Windfall Island to shop for bombs. When they see the astronomical prices, they tie the shopkeep up and rob him in the dead of night. Never try to cheat pirate folks. Uh, weirdly chaotic good since they're going to be using the bombs to save the island. With bombs in hand, the crew asks to rest, only to be shot down by Tetra. While it may be the first time in ages since they were on land, that pearl is valuable and in the line of fire. Tetra only changes her mind when she catches an eavesdropping link. Chaotic good. After watching Link rob her ship of bombs, Tetra shoots him a message via her pirate charm, reminding him of what's at stake and to not be reckless. With one final warning that her crew leaves at dawn, she gives Link a head start to save his home. Chaotic good. Hi. <laughs> Tetra keeps an eye on Link and learns that he's going to save his sister again. Realizing his careless actions, she draws the Helmarok King away so that Link can save the captured girls. When the two reconnect and she scolds him, Tetra sees the Master Sword and wonders if Link is the legendary hero of time. She dismisses it and offers to take the girls back home to their families. For a fee, of course. Link gets a pass as long as he takes care of the Helmarok King. Chaotic good. Returning to find Link is getting smacked around by adult timeline Ganondorf, Tetra charges in and attacks the King of Evil. She's beaten and knocked out, but Ganondorf recognizes Tetra's necklace. Our heroes are saved by the quick intervention of the Ritos. Neutral good. Waking up in the land of Hyrule, Tetra is summoned to the Master Sword's resting place with Link. There she learns that she is in fact the final heir to the Hyrulean court, Princess Zelda. With Ganondorf now aware of her true identity, the king asks Tetra to remain in Hyrule while Link awakens the Master Sword and collects the final Triforce. She agrees and apologizes to Link for unknowingly dragging him into this. Lawful good. Returning to Hyrule, Link discovers that Zelda has been captured by Ganondorf. After both Link and Tetra's Triforces are used to wish Hyrule's Link under the sea, as courtesy of the King of Hyrule, the two fight side by side to take down Ganondorf once and for all. Tetra holds her own, firing light arrows and getting smacked around. When Ganondorf begins dodging her attacks, she takes a gamble by firing the arrows at Link to reflect them back at Ganondorf. This culminates in an absolutely brutal nat 20 finisher. Rated E for everyone, everybody. Lawful good and that 20 scene. With Ganondorf slain and Hyrule drowning, Tetra tries to convince the King of Hyrule to come with them. Her ancestor still stays behind, but with this new lease on life and knowledge of her lineage, Tetra, Link, and her pirates travel the Great Sea to find a new land to call Hyrule. Lawful good. Sometime after Wind Waker and welcoming Link fully into her crew, Tetra continues her pirate life while looking for a new land in the Great Sea. Hearing rumors of a ghost ship, she ignores the warnings and begins looking for it and its supposed loot, chaotic neutral. Finding the ghost ship and ignoring the protest of her crew, Tetra boards the ship. Link has enough time to try and jump after her before it vanishes. Because of Tetra's brashness, she is captured and turned to stone. Guess she should have followed her own advice to think before acting. Chaotic neutral. After hours of questioning, Link is able to reawaken Tetra from her stone prison. She thanks Link and the sailor Lineback, having been able to see the adventure unfold. Too bad she's immediately captured and knocked out again by the main monster and villain, Bellum. 
Neutral. After Link battles Bellum, Tetra reunites with her friend. The two are then whisked back to the ghost ship with only 10 minutes passing from the beginning of the game. She scolds her pirates for being cowards and trying to correct her own version of events. Chaotic neutral, I guess. Sometime after the events of Phantom Hourglass, Tetra finds a new land and keeps her promise, building new Hyrule. While establishing her new monarchy, she befriends the local Locomo tribe. Learning of the ancient evil of the land, Tetra promises that she and her lineage will aid them in their hour of need. And so, Tetra lives the rest of her days, bringing the bright future to the land of Hyrule. Lawful good. Let's just give her four times, I guess. So, uh... In a confession that will probably get my gamer card taken away, I never actually finished Wind Waker. Uh, and it wasn't because of lack of interest, but uh, apparently I could not find the last piece of the Triforce. Uh, I, I, apparently there's a glitch with the ghost ship and I could never get it to work. Um, but I will say I thought the game was fun and Tetra was really dynamic in comparison to every other Zelda before her. You could say that if it wasn't for Tetra, we wouldn't have had the Zeldas with really any other personality. I mean, the Zeldas after this that are the best ones are arguably the girlfriend from Sky Skyward Sword and, of course, the leader from Breath of the Wild. And, and of course, that extends all the way to the absolute badass of the Hyrule Warrior games. That said, unfortunately, Tetra does fall into the same pitfalls that every other Zelda kind of falls into, which is a real shame. I think a lot of people really resonated with the brash, helpful Tetra. She did appear in Hyrule Warriors, which uh, says a lot about her in contrast to the other choices of all the other Zeldas. Hopefully, we'll continue to see more active Zeldas who can, like, really create her own legend. I'm really looking forward to Breath of the Wild 2. I will have to say, Breath of the Wild is absolutely my favorite Zelda game. God, I'm going to be kind of disappointed if we don't get to do at least something with her. Because according to the trailers, it looks like she's kind of a damsel again. And that's, that's a real shame. Anyways, thank you for watching. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Ding dong that bell. And December is picking up steam. Be sure to tune in next week for the Hero of Time. Thank you all to the patrons. And I'll see you next time.